Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Automation Meets Cell Separation, presented by Loda Katarina Prati, Global Product Manager, Cell Separation, Milton E. Biotech. I'm Alexis Carlos of Labberts, and I will be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by Labberts and sponsored by Milton E. Biotech. For more information about our sponsor, please visit www. .miltonybiotech.com. Before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box that appears on the screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Help Desk button located in the promotional board at the bottom center of your screen or use the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located in the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Please join me in welcoming Loda Katrina Rati. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Good morning. My name is Loda Rati, and I'm the Global Product Manager for Sales Operation at Mosini Biotech. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction, Alexis. And for the next 45 minutes or so, I'll be talking to you about automating sales operation processes and what to consider. Um, in this Automation Meet Cell Separation webinar. I'm very happy that you've taken the time to join us, but, so thank you for that. Today, we'll cover topics that have to do with automating your cell separation processes. Why automate in the first place and what to consider when you're purchasing automation? We'll, look, we'll be looking at the process overview and, for example, the laboratory context that your instrument will be going into. We'll also have a look at Max cell separation, which includes the Max, te Max technology and the Max automation. And finally, in the end, we'll have a look at customer project scenarios, in which we'll firstly have a look at scenario one, which is many different cell types as a service, more of a uh, contract research organization kind of, um, um, kind of scenario, or maybe a core facility uh, at an academic uh, institution. And in scenario two, we'll have a look at high throughput cell separation from Buffy codes. So why do people automate cell separation processes? The main reason most people automate their lab is for improved efficiency and higher throughput. This gives you time to work on other high priority tasks that cannot be automated. But automation isn't just about higher throughput. It's also about standardization and less user variability and human errors in your workflows. Of course, data reproducibility is also really important. You, get the, you have the same protocol every time, and so you get the same performance with every separation. Of course, documentation plays a large role. If you're looking at LIMS integration and sample tracking, of course, that's really good. Um, if, you do need to, uh, if you do need to troubleshoot downstream, um, it's very good to know what, where your samples, um, the, the tracking of your samples um, to have it. Um, of course, reducing downtime and reruns due to contaminations also improves efficiency and uh, improves uh, user safety. Of course, you have to balance out these aspects against the finances, for example, your budget, and the return of in, on investment, which is something that we'll be discussing later on as well. And also, there are some emotional hurdles that you need to consider as well. Um, sometimes there, there's a certain fear of automation and a certain comfort in the old ways that you, you're used to doing things. So when I talk to customers about automation, I ask them to draw the entire process from when the samples arrive in the lab to the final step in the, um, in the, in the process. 
And this is a generalized uh, and a very simplified process that we might have um, from PV, PV and C generation to cell counting to cell labeling, and then the separation and an aliquoting step in at the end. I really wish it were this easy. Um, normally, I'd actually go on a big whiteboard and add all the details, such as the number of samples, the type of samples, and the volume. Um, but we'll actually just use this as a simplified example today. Once you have your overview of the process, add a detailed timeline. If you're not sure about the times, just start a stopwatch and take notes next time you do this. The timeline should be accurate so that you're able to judge things um, well. And finally, add a third column for the manual effort that it takes to run each step. So now have a look at the, wor the workflow that you've put together. Identify the biggest bottleneck that you absolutely need to have automated, the one that's taking the most time and the one that requires the most effort. Also, what other additional steps do you have that could or should be automated in your process? <clears throat> the next question is what are your expectations? What are your goals? What do you expect from automating the process? And this is something that we have already from the first slide. Is it to improve efficiency and throughput in your lab, or is it standardization, or, or is user safety mainly your main concern? And then, what do you expect from the implementation of the automa automation? Is it off-the-shelf protocol versus optimi optimization? So do you want something that is ready for you, or do you have time to spend some time tweaking things and optimizing them for you? Do you want a simple instrument or complex automation that will cover several steps? And in this context, we also speak about specificity versus flexibility. So the more specific your process is or your automation is, and the more steps it covers, the less flexible it will be to work, on other, work with other things and cover more processes as well. The next one is laboratory context. Who's going to be running the instrument? Do you have one or two lab professionals who will be trained to run the instrument? Or is it supposed to be some, are you, it's a plan to have um, users come in and use the, use the instrument, or do you possibly have a multi-user lab where you, where you have maybe five, 10, 15 people who will use the instrument? Do you mainly run just one or two routine proce processes? or something new every day? And what are your future plans? Does the instrument need to grow together with the lab? Or are you implanting new processes in the near future that you need to take into, account, into consideration? And also, is the goal to transfer the process into the clinic? So of course, this is something that you would want to consider if, the, if your goal is to have a clinical procedure at some point and you're doing the basic research or proof of concept for that process. We mentioned return on investment already briefly, and I'd like to dive into this a little bit deeper because it's not worth it for us is a very standard answer against automation. The obvious consequence of automation is that you'll probably save on personal costs when you don't need to hire as many people. However, sample reruns and lost material also cost a lot of time, and there's not really a monetary value that you can put on lost material or confidence in your scientific results. If something does go wrong, troubleshooting is going to be easier when your sample is tracked. And finally, if your goal is translational, as we've already discussed, then you'll save a lot of time implementing the process when you can go from research to GMP grade with the same workflow. So we've now established the steps that you want to automate as well as your, what your expectations are. So far, we've concentrated on the existing protocol. However, now that you're shaking things up anyway, by adding or rethinking things, you might as well explore some new options. Here's your workflow from earlier. And what are the options that you have to change these? Are there maybe some new technologies and steps that challenge the current workflow? For example, straight from approaches offer faster separations from blood products, 
without the need for density centrifugation. Or release technology um, can be used for re releasable labeling of your cells. And, of course, something like pre-enrichment enables um, or improves your flow sorting or analysis. There, maybe there are other integrations that streamline processes and reduce edit errors. And of course, there's the testing and validation. Technical support is of course very important, whether you're running demos, um, but of course, also if you're implementing new processes and new workflows, you're going to need somebody from technical support to support you with those, uh, those questions. And of course, service contracts are there to reduce instrument downtime. So now that we've established all of the expectations and covered all of the expectations and the reasons to automate, you will normally want to weigh these against the budget that you have available. So consider the changes in your workflow, consider your arguments and whether they've actually been met by automating this process and what changes this, what, what this changes in your workflow. And we'll get to all of this in a little bit more later. We're going to change course a little bit now and get to know the Mac technology before moving on to our customer scenarios. So cell separation with Max, Max technology is based on three factors, the Max microbeats, the columns, and the magnets. First, the cells of interest are magnetically labeled with the Max microbeats. Then the cells are separated by, by um, placing them on the, on the column, which is in a, in a magnet, and the negative fraction is depleted of the labeled cells. After that, you take the column off of the magnet and elute the positively selected cell fraction. This is called positive cell isolation or depletion of unwanted cells. Of course, there's also the untouched cell isolation variant, where you label everything that you are not interested in and then collect the flow through from the column. Of course, the column is the main aspect of, or it really sets us apart from other technologies. So let's have a look at the column in a little bit more detail. The column is there to amplify the magnetic gradient by 10,000 fold. What does this mean? So here on the left, you can see a few columns. And on the right, you can see how the spheres in the column um, amplify the gradient of the magnetic force. This ensures that we have a, a thorough magnetic gradient throughout the column, and this enables minimal labeling with the nanosized microbeads that we, uh, that we um, provide. It provides free flow through of the cells through the column and thorough washing for removal of cell debris and contaminants. So in conclusion, the max columns enable cell separation with minimal effects on the cells. Of course, this can be done manually, but also Milteni Biotech offers automated solutions for every need. But if we look at sample throughput first, with the level of automation on the y-axis and the number of samples per run on the x-axis, first we have the Automax Pro, which is a, a magnetic cell separator, fully automated, so high up on the y-axis, and it's designed for one to six samples in one run. Going from one to 24 samples, we have the Multimax Cell 24 Separator Plus. However, it's only semi-automated. There's quite a bit of manual pipetting that you're going to need to do. And this is available for one to 24 samples, as I've mentioned. And in order to make sure that we have the high, high end or high throughput uh, version also in fully automated, we just brought out the Multimax X last year. So this is um, an instrument that integrates the Multimax cell 24 separator into a liquid hander. It's fully automated and can process one to 24 samples in one run. If we then move on to a different kind of comparison, this time we're looking at, at sample volume rather than throughput. We start on the, on the left with 200 microliters, moving on to 
up to 200 milliliters on the right, and the Automax Pro can be used to separate from 250 microliters to 45 milliliters of blood product. The Multimax product family can be used for small, small volumes, but of course, because we have the column block and we have a parallel cell separation, we're able to go to much higher volumes. For example, the Multimax cell 24 separator will go to about 100, 100 milliliters before it might get a little bit inconvenient. And after that, the Multimax X with the fully automated cell processing is quite able to, to process 200 milliliters without, um, without much hands-on at all. So this was a small overview of the Max technology. So let's switch to the customer scenarios now. And for our first customer scenario, we have a busy lab with three main workflows. One with human blood samples of three to eight milliliters, one with dissociated mouse tumors, and one with buffy coat. The blood and the buffy coat workflows contain a sample preparation step to generate PBMC, after which each, each workflow has a cell separation step. After the separation, the CD4 T cells of workflow one and the CD45 TILs of workflow two are stained with antibodies and used for a flow sort or flow analysis. And the NK cells from workflow three are used to perform functional. And additionally, one or two times a month, um, they have larger projects of 50 to 100 samples. Now, obviously, this is a really busy lab. So it makes sense for their expectation for automating their processes to be automation of sample labeling and cell separation just to take the hands off, uh, just to reduce the hands on time. Compatibility with as many sample types as possible, because of course, as you remember, we had PDMCs, we had mouse dissociated tissue, and we had, um, and we had whole blood. Also, high flexibility with labeling strategies, reagents, and methods is really important because, of course, there's a lot of different sample types that need to be processed in different ways. And compatibility with flow sorting analysis is also important because it's used in a lot of the downstream applications. And finally, the users can process um, the samples themselves or hire a technical assistant for help um, when they come into come into the courses. So <laughs> when we talk about um, flexibility and when we talk about many different sample types at Milton Biotech, we think of the Automax Pro. These are the Automax Pro highlights. And they are firstly, infinite sample options. Secondly, walk away automation and one column fits all. In essence, it's a really intuitive and easy to use automation for a multi-user lab. You have sequential separation of one to six samples per run. You have a large variety of different sample types and applications, even within that one run. So whether it's dissociated mouse tissue or it's uh, human whole blood, you're going to be able to combine different things in, in one run. And you have true walk away automation with automated magnetic labeling and separation of your cells. And columns are actually reusable for 14 days with high cell capacity. So they're very well adjusted, or they're very well um, suited for this kind of a multi-sample kind of workflow. Of course, what's also important for this, for this um, this scenario, when, when we think about the important features for this lab, compatibility with flow is crucial. And because the max microbead technology allows minimal labeling of the cells, the epitopes are free for later staining procedures. And this is shown on this slide. If you compare the top plot, um, so the top half of the cell separation of the uh, scheme, 
where you'll see the, the max column-based cell separation and the bottom part of the picture with some column-free technology. You'll see that the minimal labeling that you have with the max technology enables you to um, stain the same the separated cells afterwards using flow analysis. Compared to the column-free technology, where you have a lot of blocked epitopes due to the massive labeling that you have, you're actually blocking a lot of these epitopes that you will make later need for, for, um, for staining. And as you can see in, on the right-hand side, if you compare the upper and the, and the lower plots, you'll see that you have a lot of cells that you're able to stain when, when you gate on the um, CD45 positive cells, whereas compared to the uh, lower picture, you don't really see any, pic any cells on the, on, the, on the plot because they can't be stained. So now we can have a look at the expectations that the customer has and compare them to the automatic process rate. Firstly, Automation of sample handling and cell separation. I think we can check that one off. It's a fully automated process. Compatibility with as many cell types as possible. Also here, it's compatible with blood, PBMCs, and dissociated tissues. We also have the high flexibility with labeling strategies and reagents because the Automax Pro is virtually um, is compatible with virtually all mice, microbeads, and isolation kits. Also, the compatibility with flow sorting and analysis is important. So, max microbeads were developed for use with flow cytometry, and minimal labeling leaves the epitopes free for staining without speed removal. And the instrument is ideal for a multi user lab because it's so intuitive and easy to use that anyone can just come in and start using it. But then they did mention something else. They mentioned that they have a couple of times a month larger, um, larger sample numbers. So for this, we would recommend additionally for, for the scenario one, for these larger product, product, uh, projects, the Multimax cell 24 separator, which means easy handling of large sample numbers or sample volumes. It's scalable. So the sample throughput fits every workflow from one to 24 samples in one run. You can use the 24 magnets as individual magnets for small samples, or as one for, for large volume samples, such as buffy coats. And it's semi-automated, which is completely fine if you're running the workflow only once or twice a month. So this is something that would definitely be useful for this scenario also. And now that we've discussed scenario one and found the matches for, for this workflow, let's have a look at the next customer, where we have high throughput isolation of B cells from Bapico. Let's have a look at the workflow again, and I think you'll recognize this. This is the one that you saw earlier. With PBMC generation, cell count, labeling, the separation, and aliquoting of the cells afterwards. This takes well over two hours, with a major chunk of the time going into the PBMC generation. Of course, the effort here is the density gradient centrifugation, with, um, with um, centrifugation steps, with cell counting steps and having to wait for the centrifuge without a break. So this is something that, firstly, takes a lot of time, is very hands-on, and cannot be automated. So let's take a look at their expectations. They are expecting to have a fully automated cell separation of B cells from Buffy Coats, as little hands-on work in the entire workflow as possible, because they are running this in high throughput, and they want high viability and functionality of the cells because they're doing functional assays afterwards. And of course, it needs to be fast because this is a high throughput lab. 
Well, firstly, let's have a look at the main pain point, which is the PBMC generation. Currently, the protocol looks like this. You have the buffy code. You do density gradient centrifugation, which is the two-hour step that you have. Then you have your PBMCs, and then you run the max valve operation. Again, taking two hours altogether. However, using the straight from microbeads, you can go directly from your blood product to the max valve operation without without any density gradient, without cell counting, and no washing after labeling. The straight from microbeads are, are available for whole blood, for buffy coat, and for LRCs. And the leukopack micro, uh, straight from leukopack microbeads are also coming out soon. You can actually see that for functional assays, you're going to want the cells as viable and as functional as possible. As we've already seen, we have this minimal labeling of the cells using the max microbead technology due to the column, which enables a high gradient of magnetic force. So here on the left, you can see a cell that was isolated using, using max microbead technology. And on the right, you can see a cell that was isolated using a column-free technology. Here, of course, you don't have the, low gradient, the, the high gradient of magnetic force, and you have massive labeling of the cells. And of course, the question remains, how do these seeds these, um, these and this massive labeling influence the downstream applications that you're going to want to do? Also, there's another example of cell activation. So these are human B cells that were isolated using MAX technology and a column-free method. As you can see, on the, on the left, the cells are before activation, before separation. And then the cells were monitored directly after separation, seven days after, directly after separation, seven days after separation, and activated after seven days um, activation. So the one with the one star is going to be directly after separation. The one with the two stars is going to be activated or stimulated. A B cells and the one with the three stars is seven days after cell separation. And this in the middle one is the max technology, and on the right one, you'll see the column three method. And this was done using uh, or measuring CD69, CD80, and CD86 as designed for activation markers. And as you can see, that with the, with the cells isolated using max technology, there is hardly any activation directly after separation or seven days after seven days of culture. Also, in the color free method, you don't see much activation directly after separation. However, after seven days of culture, there is a very strong signal of activation, which is, of course, something that might influence your activation assays, which is something that the um, middle box for each um, separation. So if we want to if we want to automate these high high quality cell separations, we can go for the multimax X. Because this is the perfect instrument for the demanding high throughput cell processing lab. It has fully automated sample and buffer handling and magnetic labeling. It has an integrated multimax cell 20, cell 24 um, separator plus and a liquid handler, as you can see in this picture right here. So both both of the blue boxes are the vacuum station and the um, multimax cell 24 separator, and it has an integrated liquid handler which services the multimax as the separate separation unit. You have fast, fast separation from many samples in parallel, or one large sample, and every application is customized to fit your needs. So if we have a look at the protocol that we had before and compare it to the one that we will have with the Multimax X together with the straight from microbead. So first, you would fill up the sample, the buffy coat, to 80 milliliters. 
then label the cells, run the separation on the multimax X, and then aliquot the cells as needed. The time needed for this is just under 16 minutes, including the aliquoting step. And the effort that, you need, that is needed is filling up the sample to 80 milliliters, which is quite easy. And all of, the, all of the steps that come after that are fully automated. So you've actually cut down your time from two hours, or over two hours, to just one hour and automated most of the, most of the steps and reduced your effort to just minimal, number, minimal amount of hands-on work. So if we now have a look at the expectations that we had, fully automated cell separation and how the Multimax X fills them. The, of course, the process is now fully automated. You want as li little hands-on work in the entire workflow as possible, which is, of course, which we, of course you do have because the labeling, the cell separation, and the aliquoting are performed by the engineer. And, of course, the straight from microbeads enables skipping centrifugation steps. You also need high viability and functionality of your cells, which you have because you have, we, we have just seen that we have no activation prior to, the prior to simulation of the cells. And fast processing time, the straight from microbeads shorten the processing time to less than 45 minutes. So now we've seen in two customer scenarios how, how these Max with any um, automation and instruments can work together with the requirements that different kinds of labs might have. Of course, sometimes you might have one workflow, and depending on the needs and the expectations of the customer, you might end up with the, the exact same workflow and still two different instruments. And that's why, especially when we bring in these new technologies, it's so important to have the technical sales consultants and the application specialists because they're able to tell you and inform you about all of these new, um, new technologies and new processes that we have available. And this brings me to my summary. Cell separation can be automated to improve throughput and efficiency, reproducibility, and standardization in the lab. You should consider the entire sample process and identify crucial bottlenecks when evaluating automated solutions. And new technology options can shorten process steps. The technical sales consultants and application specialists are a valuable source of information here. And Mutiny Biotech provides automation solutions for every laboratory size and throughput. And with this, I'd like to thank you for your time and thank you for joining. And Let's see if we have any questions. Thank you, Loda, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window, type your question into the box that appears on the screen, and click the Send button. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So, Let's get started. Our first question is, is the protocol the same for LRSC and Leucopack? The protocol is going to be the same um, for LRSCs and Leucopacks. Um, it depends a little bit on, on the starting material. So with Buffy coats, we start by filling the sample up to 80 milliliters. Um, with LRSCs, we, we fill up to 40 milliliters. And with, uh, with uh, Leucopax, we fill up to 200 milliliters. But essentially, from there, the process is exactly the same. You add the microbeads, you separate the sam samples over a, cer a certain number or type of columns. So from the Leucopax, for the Leucopax, it's going to be the multi-24 column block, because, of course, you have higher volumes. So it's going to be actually 24 columns that, that you're going to be using for that. For the LRSCs, um, we're using the LS columns, and for the Buffy coats, we use um, whole blood columns. And the columns are actually included in the kit for all of these um, for all of these um, sample types. So you don't have to worry about which kind of column to use. The reagents and the the, um, 
the columns are actually included in the kit. Our next question is, can I isolate mouse bone marrow on the Multimax X? Um, it is possible to isolate um, cells from my, mouse bone marrow. Um, we don't, it's not something that we have a protocol for um, currently, but since every application is um, specifically um, customized for, for your needs, um, it's something that we would specifically program um, according to your workflow. So we would just have to make sure that our application development team was um, was involved, which is something that they that they do. And we have the team here in house at um, at Bergisch Gladbach in Germany, and they run all the all the tests and make sure that that the the results are exactly as as you expect, and that the instrument and the application fits um, exactly to what you're doing. Our next question is. How long does the separation of four samples on the Automax Pro take? Um, that would depend on the type of samples and what kind of workflow you're running. Um, of course, the Automax Pro has several different program types, so it would depend on that. Um, it would depend on what kind of sample it is, um, whether you're going for something that requires only one column to be used or two columns. So we have, on the Automax Pro, we have um, the possibility to use a double column program, which is actually really useful because the columns are reusable. So you're not wasting, so to speak, any columns by running it through two columns and you have additional purity um, with these steps. So it's actually really difficult to say how long that would take. Um, it would require uh, it, we would need to know what kind of samples you were running and um, what kind of protocol you wanted, whether you were looking for higher purity or higher recovery. So due to the, to, due to the flexibility that we have on the Automax, you can either go for a, a, faster, a faster separation or a slightly longer one with, uh, with a double column um, program. And Loda, it looks like we have time for one more question. How many Buffy codes can I process in parallel? Um, <laughs> it depends on the instrument and the kind of protocol that we're running. Um, normally, one Buffy code is processed in one run using 12 columns. Um, however, it is also possible to run it um, to run possibly more Buffy codes. Um, in, in one run. So that's something that we would then again discuss um, with our application development team and something that we would have to program on the Multimax X. So that's, um, that's definitely something that would have to um, be discussed again and look at, look at all of the needs. But in general, um, the kits are specified for one Buffy code is one kit and one run. I would like to once again thank Loda for her presentation. I would also like to thank Milton e Biotech for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through August of 2018. You will receive an email from Labberts letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.